Hey folks, welcome to the channel. I'm Don. This is Rock in the Country. We're going to have fun with this one yet again, even though it'll be a song that probably either rips my guts out or has me in deep philosophical directions. And I love both. So um, this was a gift request from Montauk Ed. Ed, shout out to you. Thank you. Ed sent me this clock that he made, right? This big watch clock thingy. And that box right there. And set did the whole thing. So I got to give props every so often to remind everybody about the talent uh, that some folks have and generosity. So uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter's Hallie or Haley, but I would say Hallie came to Jackson. So we're going to find out what this one's about. And Mary, Carpen Cha Mary Chapin Carpenter is from Princeton, New Jersey. Stone's throw from where I grew up in Piscataway. And I've spent, of course, a fair amount of time in Princeton because I love the town. In fact, I did research for my first book at Spear Library. It was a theological work back in 98 that got published. I did it at Spear Library, which is Princeton Theological Seminary's library. All right, here we go. Drums and picks so nicely. Late one night when the wind was still, Daddy brought the baby to the windowsill mm. to see a bit of heaven shoot across the sky. The one and only time Daddy saw it fly. Oh. It came from the east just as bright as a torch The neighbors had a party on their porch Daddy rocked the baby, mother said amen When Hallie came to visit in 1910 Some people just are brilliant Unreal. Now back then Jackson was a real small town not every night a comet comes around It was almost 80 years since its last time through Oh, how is Comet, of course So I bet your mother would have said amen too uh. As its tail stretched out like a stardust streak The papers wrote about it every day for a week yeah. I wondered where it's going and where it's been When Hallie came to Jackson in 1910 I got to say this about a uh, comet's tail, because it's weird. All right, we're so used to living in an atmosphere, right? In the Earth's atmosphere. So anytime something's going through the atmosphere, well, even it's, uh, we call them shooting stars or anything, it doesn't matter, automobile, exhaust, whatever. It goes behind it, away from the direction of the object. In outer space where there's no resistance, because there is no atmosphere, a comet's tail is determined by the sun. Like, Halley's Comet is determined by the sun. Like, it'll actually shift direction. And so the comet could be going in this direction. But if, it's, um, but if the sun is here and the comet's going this way, the tail will actually go in front of the comet. It's funky like that. Pretty sure I have that right, right, physicists? Daddy told the baby sleeping in his arms To dream a little dream of a comet's charms And he made a little wish as she slept so sound did you see the next comet? In 1986, that wish came round. Yes! It came from the east just as bright as a torch. She saw it in the sky from her daddy's porch. Uh -huh. As heavenly scent as it was back then. When Halle came to Jackson in 1910. When the wind was 
still. I like that return to the original line. That is just beautiful. I, you know, I didn't make the connection initially with Halley's Comet. And then I obviously made it part way through it, but I'm like, oh, what a story. Like, and how did dad know that there was a comic going to be out there? It's just coincidence. How's this going to be developed? And then it turned out, I mean, this really could have been a true story. I think Halley's comic comes around. I, I, is it every 76 years? I mean, in the song, she was born in 1910. And then in, 80, in 1986, she was the grandmother on the porch on her father's house. She inherited from her father, uh, which is a beautiful thing. It's just the family was intact as well. When you inherit something like that, generally speaking, it means the relationship along life's path went well, then you've got the house and now you're watching the comet that you were too young to notice um, because you were a newborn, but your dad showed you. That was great. And I love that line that, that in, like the wind was still. And I love that kind of detail. The dad showed, held the baby to the window to see the comet, you know, but the, the left, that little detail was brilliant that the wind was still, uh, but she moved to Jackson. I don't, mm, I don't know if that was Wyoming or there are Jacksons in a lot. There's a Jackson in New Jersey and a lot of Jacksons everywhere, but that was beautiful. All right, Ed. Yeah, of course you got me going. It's just the usual thing. I don't know how it happens that every time I react to a song that you request, I forget that you've requested it because I'm so enthralled by the song. That's an incredible talent you have, my friend. Um, all right. Uh, I love this stuff, and I love cosmology. I love astronomy. I used to have a telescope, a Celestron 8. I could see the rings of Saturn, and there's just so many things you could see with a good telescope, and that was a very good telescope. And I took astronomy and cosmology at Rutgers, and there was a reason it was in the physics department, which I'd kind of overlooked in the course catalog when I signed up for the class. The first, I thought it was going to be an easy class because I knew about stars and stuff. This was all about formula. That's all it was, how to tell how far away... Yeah, based on Earth's rotation around the sun, and you look at stellar parallax, what is the formula for determining how far away an object is, and things like this. And um, so it was way headier than I thought. And But I signed up for the second uh, part of the class as well, so I, I guess I liked it enough. But um, I love this kind of stuff. I do. Like, what makes something go so far out, but still be in orbit around this object at the center of our solar system, obviously our sun. And is it gravity? If so, what is gravity? How does relativity factor into this? Well, how does space-time, the ripples in space-time, factor into how objects go around other objects? What is it that attracts certain objects to others? Why didn't it? Why doesn't it just blast off into space? I don't, this kind of stuff, it's just, they're still working the bugs out on this. Yeah, uh, there's sort of like been a crisis for a few years now in quantum physics and probability because what they're expecting to see on a smaller scale is not lining up with what the probabilities suggest they should. And that, if you look at things from a fractalized standpoint, if that's even a word, and ex extrapolated out, do other larger objects act the same way smaller ones do? And in, um, no, they don't, but should they? And you think, well, probably, because physics don't change. But in small spaces, they do. Anyway, this is what you did to me again, Ed. A <laughs> song about Halley's Comet. <laughs> All right. I'm going to rate this one. And I, the number that popped into my head immediately was a 9.0. And uh, I loved it. I love her voice. I love the picking. I love the sweetness. I love the inspiration. It got me wondering. What, I mean, she's such a brilliant songwriter and such an idea person that I can't even imagine the number of ideas she's got to fight off so that she can stay focused on what she's writing. Because I understand that when you're sort of unfettered in some ways and you like the crazy, you like the uh, extraneous, and you like the small, and you like the... like. All these different ideas that are welcoming 
because uh, I'm guessing she's an extremely compassionate person. I've never met her. But when you're compassionate too, you welcome other ideas and you look for good in other things and the fun and all that. And I just can't imagine how many ideas she, she's had to fight off uh, or couldn't go with or started and didn't finish because as a songwriter and lyricist, like she is, you're fighting them off. You're coming up with so many things that don't materialize. So, okay, guys, that does it for this episode. Montauk Ed, thank you for that, my friend. That was a ton of fun. Have a great day. I'll see you on another video and keep rocking the country. Yeah.